This video is about solving rational equations. I'm going to give you some guidelines of solving rational equations. First of all, let's recall that a rational equation is an equation that involves rational expressions. That means that we may expect some fractions and possibly some variables in denominators of those fractions. So here's one example of a rational equation. Before we even start solving this equation, the very first step would be to determine the domain. Let's recall that domain is the set of all possible x values that we can plug into any expression within this equation and be able to evaluate it. So what are the numbers that will be impossible to evaluate? Well, those are the ones that will make any of those denominators zero. That means x can't assume the value zero because both of these denominators would be zero, which is not good for us. Okay, therefore domain for this equation is all real numbers except for zero. So we need to subtract a set composed of one element zero from the set of all real numbers. As soon as we have our domain determined, the next step would be to clear the fractions, get rid of our denominators. How can we do this? By multiplying both sides of the equation by lowest common denominator. Remember that we can employ this method only when we deal with equations, never expressions. Because in case of an equation, we change both sides of the equation in the same way, so we end up with an equivalent equation. However, if we deal with just a single expression, if we multiply it by anything, it will have to be 1, nothing else but 1, because in case of an expression, we can't really change the value of it. Okay, so what is LCD for this particular equation? Well, we consider all three denominators, and the LCD for those denominators will be 3 and x. So let's multiply the whole equation by 3x. This slash that I'm drawing here is just for our records to indicate what we are doing to the whole equation. So multiplying by 3x really means that every single term will have to be multiplied by 3x. So to help ourselves to remember this multiplication, we can gently write the 3x in the top, keeping in mind that we are multiplying it. So 3x times every single term. In the first term, the 3x will reduce the denominator 3x, so we end up with just 4. Then we have a minus. In the second term, we can reduce the x with the x, but the other 3 stays. So we still need to multiply this 3 times the numerator 3. Therefore, it's 9. And then equals. And here we can reduce the 3 with the denominator 3. What's left is multiplication by x. So we have 10x. I would advise you to spend more time at this step because this is the critical step in solving correctly the whole equation. After we clean up all denominators, the equation becomes a lot easier, usually a polynomial equation, which we know how to solve. So this is the most important step, multiplying by LCD correctly, reducing all the denominators and multiplying by remaining parts of our LCD. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, just to solve the polynomial equation. In this particular case, we have linear equations, so it shouldn't be any trouble here. 4 minus 9 is negative 5 equals 10x. And then we divide the whole equation by 10, so x would be equal negative 5 over 10. Let's rewrite it starting with x from the left and simplifying the 5 tenths to 1 half. So x is negative 1 half. Is that all what we need to do? Hmm. Not quite. We need to check our possible solution against the domain. So we're looking at our solution and we are checking is that in all real numbers except for zero? Yes, it is. So that's our true solution. Finally, we just need to state our answer. The solution set equals negative one half. We can write like this or we can just say x equals negative one half 
but show in your work that yes, you checked against the domain and you decided that this is the true solution to the original equation. Let's say we want to solve equation A. So what would be the first step? Yes, we need to find the domain. The domain for this equation is all real numbers except for this number that will make the denominator 0, either this one or that one. They are actually the same. So when y minus 3 is 0? Well, when y is equal to 3. Therefore, the number 3 is not good to take for the domain. So the domain is all real numbers except for 3. And now we can start solving it. Our next step would be to multiply by LCD, which in this case is just y minus 3, the whole expression. Therefore, if we multiply this fraction by the denominator, the denominator will be reduced. So what's left is really y minus 1. On the other side, again, if the denominator will be reduced, what's left is single 2. Very simple equation. Therefore, when we solve it for y, see what will happen. 2 plus 1, that's actually 3. Hmm. Is it something suspicious? Yes, it should be. We need to check against the domain. We ended up with y equals 3. That's a possible solution, but not necessarily the true solution. And actually it isn't, because it's not in domain. So we say not in domain. Therefore the final answer is an empty set, or we can say no solution. The solution set is empty. Let's try the next example. Again, first find the domain. It is all real numbers except for the numbers that will make the denominator 0. In order to find out which x values will make those denominators 0, we need to factor them. These two denominators are already in a factored form, but that one, it's a good idea to realize that this is really a difference of squares, and it's a product of x minus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, so, from the first denominator, the restricted x value is equal to 1, right? Therefore, we have to get rid of 1 from the set of real numbers. In the second denominator, the restricted number is negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 is 0, right? So again, we are going to get rid of negative 1 out of the set of real numbers. Is it anything else that we need to throw out? Not really, because the last denominator is actually the product of the previous two. So we already covered those values that will make denominator 0. Therefore, that's our domain. All real numbers except for 1 and negative 1. Okay, so we can start solving this equation. Let's multiply by LCD. What is LCD for all those three fractions? Well, those are the two brackets, x minus 1 and x plus 1 because this product is divisible by x minus 1, by x plus 1, and by the difference of squares x squared minus 1. Therefore, if we multiply the first fraction by x minus 1, x plus 1, the x minus 1 will be reduced. What's left is x plus 1. We need to multiply the existing x times the x plus 1, the missing bracket from the denominator. Now we have minus. Let's copy the 2. Since x plus 1 will be reduced this time, we actually need to multiply by x minus 1. Okay, let's write it down. x minus 1 equals 4, and this time we don't need to multiply by anything because both brackets will be reduced. So the following step would be just to solve this polynomial equation. Let's release those brackets, multiply through, so we have x squared plus x minus 2x plus 2 and we can bring the 4 to the other side, it becomes negative 4 equals to 0. Remember, polynomial equations can be solved by factoring. Let's collect like terms first, x squared minus x, and then 2 minus 4 is negative 2 equals 0. See if we can factor it. The product is 2, the difference is 1, so 2 and 1 should work. Obviously, we have x and x here. And then, since the difference is negative, the larger number takes the middle sign, it will become negative, and this one is positive. Okay, we're going to carry on here. Therefore, using zero product property, 
either the first bracket is 0 or the second bracket is 0. The first bracket is 0 when x is equal to 2, or the second bracket is 0 when x is equal to, yes, negative 1. So those are our candidates for solutions. Are these two numbers really solutions? In order to answer this question, we need to check them against the domain. Since 2 sits in the domain, that's not a problem, therefore this is a solution. However, negative 1 is not in domain, it's exactly excluded from the domain. So what we need to do is to cross this possibility and say not in domain. Always try to justify your decisions. Therefore, the final answer for this question is the solution set consists of just one number, 2. Or we can simply say x equals 2. In the end, we have a little bit bigger question. Hopefully, you won't be as puzzled as our companion character. The first thing that we need to do is to find the domain. It is all real numbers except for the points that would make the denominators 0. In order to find which a values will make denominators 0, first we need to factor those denominators. In the first denominator, let's take the common factor 2 out of the bracket. We are left with a minus 3. The second one, oh, that looks like a perfect square, so we can write a minus 3 square, because 3 squared is 9 and double the 3 is 6, right? The third denominator, we can factor the common 3 out, and we are left with a minus 3 again. Factoring denominators helps us to find out the domain, but it's useful not only for the domain, in a second, we are going to multiply by LCD, which involves cancelling. So factored form of our denominators can be very useful in our future calculations. Okay, what number do we have to exclude from our domain? Well, it's this 3, right, here and there. And also the middle one gives us the restriction of 3 as well. So minus 3. All real numbers except for 3. Okay, now it's time to multiply by LCD. So multiply by 2 and 3, therefore 6, and 2 brackets, bracket square, so a minus 3 square. That's our LCD. Therefore, if we multiply the first fraction with such denominator by our LCD, what will happen is we are going to reduce the 2 with the 6, leaving us with 3 here. And we're going to reduce the bracket with one bracket, but the other bracket will still stay. So let's copy the numerator, and this numerator will have to be multiplied by whatever's left over from our LCD expression. So by 3 and a bracket. I can write the 3 before a and a bracket after a. Then we have minus, and we do the cancellation all over again. So let's erase the previous markings. This time we're going to reduce the square of the bracket, the whole bracket square, and what's left is just 6. So we have our previous numerator 3 times the leftover from the LCD, which is 6, equals, copy the numerator a minus 2, make sure that you put a bracket around it, because who knows, maybe we need to multiply by something else, right? Okay, so again, what will be cancelled? 3 will be cancelled with 6, leaving us with 2, and one bracket will be gone, but the other bracket we still need to take. So, times 2 and times another bracket a minus 3. Great! After this hard work, what we need to do is to perform all these multiplications and solve a polynomial equation. So, let's do it. 3a times a is 3a squared minus 9a minus 3 times 6, 18 equals and now I am going to leave the 2 for later and multiply these two brackets just by foiling. Let's try to foil efficiently, that means come up with the middle term in our minds. So a times a is a squared. The middle term contains just one a, so we multiply the inner terms and the outer terms and add them up. Negative 2a and negative 3a, it's negative 5a. Finally, last terms, it becomes positive 6. 
Okay, now it's time to multiply by 2. So we have 2a squared minus 10a plus 12. And we are going to move everything to one side just after I copy this part. So, all a squares. If I move the 2a squared to the left, it becomes negative. So 3a squared minus 2a squared is just single a squared. Then negative 9a and positive 10a, it becomes plus 1a. Negative 18 and negative 12 is negative 30. Everything equals 0. And the next step, as you may expect, we need to factor. How do we factor? a, a, product 30, difference 1. Well, how much is that? 6 and 5. 6 with a positive sign, because the larger number takes the middle sign, and 5 with a negative sign. Therefore, our possible roots or solutions means the same. R, negative 6 from the first bracket or 5 from the second bracket. Now, before you make your final answer, always check against the domain. But in this case, both numbers, negative 6 and 5, are in domain, so both are fine. Therefore, that's our final answer. This is the solution set. The solution set for this equation is negative 6 and 5. Both numbers are fine. And now it's your turn. Take some problems from the textbook and practice until you feel comfortable solving rational equations.